What does God expect from you as a Christian? Well, today I am out in my bee yard just to show you, a set an example, so to speak, about the Bible verse that says, do not forsake the gathering or the assembling together of yourself. God wants us around each other because we have good things that we can bring and that we can bring to the table and show to other people. And I came here with these bees just to show you this for an example. These bees all work in harmony with each other. They actually, and I've even heard this as a beekeeper, I will not eat bananas and then check my bees the same day. From what I've heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, I just don't do it because I don't want to chance it, but that it has the sense of smell, the same type of pheromone that they put off when they would be angry if like a bear was attacking. So I won't eat bananas before I come out here or even a banana nut muffin or anything like that. Again, I don't know if there's any truth to that or not, but as a beekeeper, I just don't do it. So bees communicate primarily through their pheromones, primarily through this sense of smell. And as a beekeeper, I will tell you that if I do something, if I squash one bee, if I irritate even one bee, the, the lull, that low hum will all of a sudden rise and it will all of a sudden be a war cry from every single bee in that tribe and they will forfeit their life to protect what they have worked to build. So they are working for the greater good of the entire hive and they will sacrifice their life if they feel that that is threatened. And I don't have to tell you that we are under attack now. I don't have to tell you that Christians are being threatened. You don't necessarily have people like when I was coming up, we had uh, DC Talk came out with a book called The Jesus Freaks. You don't have like Fox's Book of Martyrs type stuff going on necessarily right now. But it's not exactly like uh, the Ten Commandments are in schools anymore and that 60% of the population is Christian anymore like what it used to be. It's not exactly how it used to be anymore. You are made by God. You are designed by God to go in and change things. So when you go into, because there's a protocol to every room that you go into, when you go into a church, when it's time for praise and worship, are things around you changing for the good? Because I can tell you right now, if you've got your hands stuck in your pockets, your arms crossed in front of you, they're changing things around you. They're changing for the bad. Because again, you are not a thermometer. You are a thermostat. And you will change the trajectory of how things will go in that praise and worship service. So this is the last days, folks. This is There's no doubt about it. In my mind, we are in the last days. You may disagree with me, but that is my firm belief that we are in the last days. You are called. You are chosen. You are equipped for such a time as this. Everything you have been through is preparation for what God is bringing you to. He wants the in time harvest to be something that we cannot possibly even imagine. And in the church, we have such an opportunity to show others what God has called us to, what he has equipped us for, and is not something that we need to be forsaking. Do not forsake the assembling together of yourselves. It was told to me a while back, somebody said, you know, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And I just kind of smiled. I said, you know, you're right. You do not have to go to church to be a Christian. But you know what? You don't have to sit in a car or sit in a garage to be a car. But I've seen a lot of rusted out old beauties out in the yard because they had no covering. So, no, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And a car doesn't have to sit in a garage to be a car. But for that car to have a covering and to be protected and to not be some rusted out old beauty with grass growing up through it, it has to have that covering. And that's something that you can have when you do not forsake the assembling together of yourselves. It is so vital. It is so important for you to 
plug into a local body and to passionately pursue the things of God. During praise and worship, I'm a praise and worship leader. That is what I do. You will hear me talk a lot about praise, a lot about worship, passionately, possessively seeking after God in a militant way that will not let go until the Holy Ghost comes in and it shifts the atmosphere because again you are not a thermometer you are a thermostat you can shift that atmosphere i firmly believe that everyone is a praise and worship leader because you will change the atmosphere for the better or for the worse if you've got your arms crossed it's going to affect the atmosphere around you if you are lifting your hands that is going to affect the atmosphere around you too so i believe that there is a spirit-led praise that is on the inside of each and every person that if you just want to offer a praise that your flesh is comfortable with it's only going to go just so far but if you will open up and allow the holy ghost to praise through you allow your spirit man that one that god gave to you that puts you that is on the inside of you jeremiah said that god knew him before he was formed in his mother's womb god told him he said i knew you jeremiah before you were formed in your mother's womb and that spirit that is inside of you i bet you that can let out a praise if you will let it that will be second to none Again, you are not a thermometer. You are a thermostat. You are made to set the temperature of everything around you. And just like I said with these bees, I wanted you to see that as I'm sitting here in front of them, I'm in their flight path. I've been bumped by a few of these bees as I've been talking. I don't know if they bumped the microphone, if you could hear them buzzing. They're not stinging me. They're not bothering me. I could come out here as a beekeeper without a bee suit. Not that brave, but I could as long as I've got a smoker so that I can block those pheromones and say, hey, you know, I'm not the enemy. Go on ahead down into your hive and start eating some honey. Get busy with your work. As long as I can do that, they're going to leave me alone. And I think that we can learn a lot from that in the body of Christ. Let's not go at each other stinging, gossiping. You don't need to vent. Let's say that again. You don't need to vent. To one another you don't need to put somebody on the prayer list and it is gossip even if it's true it just is you don't need to be gossiping about people you don't need to be venting all right you can go to the lord with these things there are things that you can go to god with about that you don't necessarily need to be calling your brother and sister and gossiping putting other people on the prayer list and other things like that i'm sitting right out here on their flight path they are not doing anything to me now, if I were to crack that lid and go into that beehive and squish even one bee, they would all start to come at me. There would be this loud buzz. It would start to change the atmosphere. It would be electric. You would hear it. You would feel it. I'm not going to do it. But that, I think, is something that we need to take note of because there's something that's happened in the news today. I'm not even going to mention it because it's not worthy of it but i've got some boycott things going on i've got a particular shopping center i'm not going to anymore i think that there are things that we can come together as the body of christ not be attacking each other but come together and love in the body of christ and say we're not standing for that we will not be frequenting this establishment any longer and those are the things we should fight for so this may be a series. How, what should you be doing as a Christian? What does God want from you as a Christian? First of all, do not forsake the assembling together, the gathering together of yourselves. You need to be in a local body. You need to be plugged into a church. You need to be under a covering. I love you all. Until next time, bye.